Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today I want to solve a problem of finding the right free video editor for you. Now this can be a complicated process uh, because there's so many different ones out there, some really good ones and some not so good ones. I want to put together a list for you that you can go through and match the one that's best for you. Now it's important that you realize the one that I might think the best for me isn't going to be the best for you. So you need to kind of go through and check all these options and then say, oh, that's the best one. I'm going to try that one out. Do remember with all of these too, it depends on your computer, what the specs are, your skill level, and where you want to progress to. And I'll try to give some points on each of those uh, depending on what level you're at. Now, uh, I have links to all these ones, a lot of the ones I mentioned down below for the tutorials that you can get started uh, with if you do find one that you like. Uh, another thing I just wanted to point out, if you're interested in learning, uh, finding more about some free photo editing editing software, check out this video that I have on some top Photoshop alternatives. But let's get started with this guide today that hopefully saves you a lot of time and frustration in choosing the right free video editor for you. So just before we get started here today, just to let you know that I use Camtasia to film my videos. A lot of people ask if I'm using one of the free video editors, but for my purposes, Camtasia works great for screen capture uh, with the webcam and uh, my screen and be able to use the green screen behind me. This is not a free program. I'll put the link to it if you wanted to check it out down below. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention was that all these video editors, free video editors I'm talking about today are gonna be non-watermarked, but you might have to go through uh, registering them as a free copy uh, but I'll point that to out as I get get to those so the first one I want to mention today is DaVinci Resolve now you can see it says DaVinci Resolve 16 behind me there's also a DaVinci Resolve 15 the 16 is currently in beta but it's still a great program to use if you're looking to uh, download it uh, you go to blackmagicdesign.com scroll all the way down to the very bottom and you'll see where the links are where you can download these each for free and uh, they'll just ask you some questions before you and some fill in some information before you're to download it. The one thing I wanted to note that this is available on Mac, Windows, or Linux, but do make sure that your computer is powerful enough to uh, run this. So check out, just Google what the specs are needed for running um, for running DaVinci Resolve 15 and 16 and check what your computer uh, can handle, especially when it comes to the graphic uh, graphics card, because if you don't it's not going to work very well, especially uh, if you get it loaded up. Uh, if your videos are getting a little longer, you're going to have a little bit of problems too. So let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve uh, just to point out a few extra things about it. So if you're going to be using DaVinci Resolve 16 or 15, uh, be prepared for a learning curve. Uh, if you're a beginner, this might not be the one for you, but if you're if you're gung-ho and want to dive into it and get some professional editing, uh, there's lots of resources out there for DaVinci uh, Resolve, including my own video that I'll put the link down, a beginner's tutorial. This is a very powerful program, uh, but it has a different workflow. So even if you've done some editing before, it's a little bit different how it works, but once you learn it, you'll be able to create some fantastic things. So if we just take a quick look uh, across the bottom here, we can see where I'm in the media. We could go to our cut page here. So the cut page, this is new in DaVinci 16. It just allows you uh, to produce or sorry, to edit very quickly uh, versus the traditional edit page. So if you need to put things, if you want your quick workflow uh, and work fast, this would be the page for you. Traditionally, more in the previous ones, we have our traditional edit editing timeline uh, that we go and work through with putting out in our using our channels but we also have in here if you for the uh, powerful powerful motion graphics effects that we can add here in fusion color grading another very powerful thing uh, inside DaVinci Resolve uh, I think it's one of the better ones out there for these type of effects if you're looking at going to the top level and we have our fair light here uh, to uh, where we have our audio and then we deliver it through here so it's a little different look uh, than some of the other editors but like I said it's powerful make sure you have your computer to uh, for specs to uh, to really handle this program and make sure that you're ready to learn a little different style than some of the other ones. So next on the list is Shotcut. 
Now, Shotcut completely surprised me when I started using it looking for free video editors a couple years ago. It just, and it surprised me in a good way that it was so much more powerful than I expected. Uh, it, again, it's cross-platform, so you can take a look at it if you need it for Windows, for Mac, or for Linux. It's there for you. Uh, it's completely free. There's no pro version to it at all, uh, and it's very, very good. I actually would recommend this to a lot of people, uh, you know, if they're just starting out, because it's one that that they could progress with uh, quite a bit and stay longer with than maybe some of the simpler programs to it. Let's take a look uh, at, the, at the app here with some of the features with it. The one thing I would say about Shotcut, as much as I like it, it's not intuitive at first. Once you watch a few tutorials, and I do have a tutorial for this one, uh, you'll you'll like it and it will be easy to use. But if you're just getting into it, if you use other editors, it might not uh, be what you expect. So do give it a chance, though. Uh, you can quickly bring in your footage and uh, drag your playhead around and make some cuts uh, to it just by simply dragging. And you can see how you can split a playhead, and then you can adjust uh, your cuts to different places to it. Uh, you can add more tracks quickly uh, to it. So it has all the different uh, from video to audio, all the different things that you can add very quickly. I like all the options that you have for exporting this. You can see from YouTube to all the different uh, all the different types that are needed. The other thing I just wanted to mention too on this, I like all the different things like the filters they have. So if I go ahead and click on one of these clips and then just pick a filter and then just we go to add, we'll just do a little color grading here. You can see how I can quickly, I'll drag the playhead over top so you can see which one I'm adjusting, how quickly it is to make the adjustments in this. Uh, so you can go through and do some uh, great editing inside Shotcut. I do find once you kind of get over that uh, little bit of difference, maybe from other video uh, editing programs, this is a great program, completely free uh, to use for you. So to round out my first three, it is HitFilm Express. So this is another uh, great free option. And there is a pro version to this. The Express is the free one. What I would say, if you do decide to go with this one, make sure that you register it with a free copy. Uh, you'll see when you uh, make sure you log into it uh, or else it is going to be watermarked and there'll be a sound that goes across it too when you export it. So do make sure you register it. You can see uh, it is for uh, Mac and Windows, this one. If you scroll down, down. You can see what uh, what uh, computers will it run on. You can Apple and Windows, and just quickly check out if yours will match with this. So let's go and take a look at Hit Film Express. Some of the features inside of it. When you open up Hit Film Express, you'll be greeted with all these great ideas that you can start working on. I like how they do that. It always gives you new ideas to see to give, go and give something a try inside Hit Film Express. If you've worked with other video editors before and used to kind of more the traditional uh, way video editors work, this HitFilm Express could be the best one for you. Uh, you can see how the, where the media is imported to and then the tracks, and then you have your two viewer windows up here, kind of set up how a lot of other ones are. You can quickly drag in your media in here and then everything's right here with your effects that you can go through and drag right on and then make any adjustments uh, to it by just opening up you can see how you can make the changes to the different clips as I just drag it around back and forth and there's many different effects that you can add uh, one thing to note with this though if you try adding any of the uh, effects that have uh, the add-on it will become watermarked on it so make sure you stick to just the ones that are part of the free one uh, if not you will get the hit films Express watermark that comes up on it but there's lots of powerful tools inside hit film Express so if you're looking through masking, green screen, it has a lot of different ones that you can play with. And with the traditional uh, setup, if you've used this one, I find the learning curve is pretty good with this. And there's lots of tutorials out there to really maxify, maximize HitFilm Express. Uh, and then there you could always move up to the pro version if you did want to pay uh, to go to that. But as a free version, I'm pretty expressed with the exports on this one and just with the uh, handling of what it can do for you if you're a beginner uh, just looking to start with video editing and then continuing with the same editor as you improve. 
The next video editor I want to tell you about is VSDC. Now, one thing to know, this is only for the Windows operating system. If you're Mac or Linux, it's not going to work for you. Uh, I like this one because it doesn't require a lot of power to work well. If you click on just on the system requirements, you can see uh, where you're at for the RAM, uh, 256 megabytes, or even uh, what the AMD or what the processors are. And you can see it works from XP all the way to Windows 10 on this one so if you are on Windows this could be a great option if you don't have a lot of power and it's still quite easy to pick up again once you uh, go through a few tutorials and understand how it's set up it could work quite well for you there's lots of great uh, features in this if you look down uh, just the list of them how what it supports it even supports 4k and HD uh, export with this one and then you have things for like your YouTube uploader video stabilization tool meant for free uh, for free a video editor this has a lot of uh, things offered in it and the, the other thing I like about it for $19.99 you can upgrade to the pro one but I find the free one does a lot all the things that you need it to do let's take a look at it now Let's take a look at a few of the things VSDC can do for you. Now, right away when I open, you can see how we can create a blank project. We can create easy slideshows in here, importer content, video capture, screen capture. You can even see down here uh, when they're talking about editing in 360. I'm just going to go ahead and create a blank project and I'm just going to use the defaults on here. Uh, there's a bit, a little bit different in, in uh, terminology on a few things. So if I'm adding uh, some video here, it's adding objects. So if I go ahead and just grab a video, I'm going to just grab one of these here and then it just imports it into a track. And as I import more things in, so if I go and this time I'm going to import uh, a couple more here. So I'm just going to go back to video again and I'm just going to pick these two right here. And you can see now when I imported those two, it went to the second track over here. But what I like to, what you can do is you can actually combine, uh, combine these. And if I right click on this, I'm just going to go convert to a sprite. So a sprite's a different term you might not uh, be heard in different editors, but what it does, it kind of nestles the two into one. So I put these two together and if I double click, I go into it you can see over here that the sprite, I have one sprite in inside of it are these two videos. So uh, what I like about this, I could go to it and I could, once I edited it this the way I want, I could go ahead and move it around into different places uh, and all those videos and everything's are combined in once. Other than that, there are easy features in here. So if I was clicking on a, uh, if I wanted to make some adjustments, you can see how quickly I can adjust uh, things from colors. I can add uh, all the different effects up to the top, up here, all the different things I can do. And you can right click on any of these to add, uh, to get to anything to quickly adjust. Plus you can splice, crop, everything's up here, easy access. A Little bit different at first when you start playing with it, but watch the tutorial and this could be a great solution for free video editing for you. All right, so the OpenShot video editor, this is another cross-platform, good on Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, powerful enough to do some great editing, uh, but very simple to use at the same time. I think it's one of the easier ones. So if you're a beginner, this could be very good for you. I have seen some issues when the video gets longer where things can be laggy, uh, whether that's the uh, computer not matching. So check the specs that uh, are needed on this one for your computer. But let's take a look at it to just show you how to, how simple this one can work. Simplicity is what OpenShot is all about. You can see inside the program, uh, nothing looks overwhelming to this. You bring in your uh, clips very easily just by hitting uh, here to import them and you can go ahead and pick your different images or audio and it brings it in. Drag them down into your tracks. You can see how quickly you drag them and then you have transitions and effects that you can uh, grab and bring over on top of these and at any time of these if you click and open you can go to the properties and fine tune these too. Now if you want to do some clip as some editing you can see where we have our slicing tool our slice tool through here. So everything is just there. Uh, it's not an overwhelming uh, overwhelming video editor software. So but what you can do when you export you can see that you still have lots of options to how you want to export it with a lot of different formats. So if you're looking for something easy not over 
overwhelming, this could be a good place to start. And like I said before, just make sure it kind of works on your computer well, that it meets the specs. And uh, if you don't have a lot of experience, I would suggest OpenShot. So the last one I want to talk about tonight is Lightworks. This is another cross-platform, good on Mac, Windows, Linux, and very simple to use, uh, very powerful, but with a few things I wish was there for the free version, uh, but it's still a good program to use. I'll show you what I wish was there uh, when we dive into the user interface now. So just to take a quick look at the interface here in Lightworks, you can see uh, right now I'm under the edit and just kind of similar to what DaVinci Resolve was as you click through the different parts where this is where you'd add your effects to a certain scene and you can see things like uh, color correction that you can add and we do have our own audio tab. Going back to edit, you can quickly edit your different pieces. Make sure you're clicked on, you can quickly lock anything by just clicking off of it. Uh, the right click, uh, uh, a lot of the different things for editing so if you right click on anything you're going to find it but if you wanted to do some quick uh, edits to cut things out you can even use the window up here so if I put an in marker and then grabbed an out like so and then I have the options that if I click this one it'll delete it leaving the gap if I go back to control Z you can see if I click this one here it deletes it and just moves it back so it's easy to cut out those things in between so that's just a kind of quick look at the interface to give you an understanding what this one looks like. The one thing that I was mentioning before that I, I wish this had was more was in the export. So what I'm going to do is actually just go down to the bottom corner here under all and I'm just going to right click and go to export here. And uh, when I go under export, I'm just going to go to uh, target here target and then we'll go to YouTube here. So YouTube notice that's a 720p. Well, I can't go above 720p. You have to go to the Pro. So this could be one thing that stops you from using Lightworks is if you wanted that high quality one, you do need to upgrade and pay for this. As a 720p, this is a good editor, very powerful, uh, easy to use, but do know that before you think about using this program to download it for free. I hope this guide helped you out tonight. Hopefully it alleviates some issues when you're trying to decide which one is the best for you. Like I said, take a look at them. Let me know which one you're using and any issues that you're having down in the comments down below. Uh, I like to take that information and add it to my next videos if I can try to find fixes and different things like that. If there's other ones that you like, let me know also in the comments down below and I can take a look and do tutorials on those. So thanks for watching this week at Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tips and tutorials.